Hello everybody, it is your boy Twin Plays here back in our video. I hope you guys are all doing amazing. So today in this video, we are going to be doing a Brookhaven Backpack GUI. Now, some of you guys may have been requesting this video and have been wondering, you know, Twin, I'd love to have a Backpack GUI. Now, this is something for roleplay games. Now, if you are making a roleplay game, I really recommend watching this video because it is awesome and um, it will teach you how to make this and I'll go step by step in detail why um, and how we are doing this. Now, if you're new to my channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on post notifications. It means so much to me. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers, which is amazing. Um, so thank you for everyone who is subscribed. You guys mean a lot to me. Um, and feel free to join the Discord because we do host giveaways and we do help out everyone in need of scripting help or anything like that. So, And I do check out suggestions of the tutorials. So you're going to go to the description and you're actually going to get the Brookhaven Backpack UI model. So you can either download this or you can just put it into your inventory. Um, once you get this model, you're going to hop right into the studio, which we're in right now. And you're actually going to go to your toolbox or, you know, depending on how you do it, you can go to model and hit model right here. But, um, it should just be this one right here. Now, in my last video, we talked about the proximity catalog gear giver. So feel free to go watch that if you haven't. It's really cool. Um, so you're going to get a few things. This is just a readme script. You don't need to really worry about this because you guys are watching the tutorial right now. Um, but just delete that. And um, this is what it's going to look like. So you guys are probably like, well, all right, we already got it ready for you. So I'm actually going to just quickly hit play here. Oh, you know what? I didn't hit ungroup, guys. Okay, that's that's what you don't want to do. So you want to make sure you ungroup these real quick. So control U and control U should be good. And then hit play here. And I'm it's already ready for me, so I'm just going to quickly show you. Um, super simple stuff. There is um some sounds for this already. So I think you can hear that. But <laughs> um, this is what it looks like. So... You know, you could really make this look really nice. Um, Bloxburg has a few different ways of doing this. They have like settings and stuff. You can turn this into a top bar GUI. You can really do your to your own liking, but this is super simple. Um, and so how this works is you have image labels. And when you click them, as you can see, it gave me a cup and it put a check mark. When I do that again, it gets rid of my um, item. And then of course, you know, that's how it is. Now this tool is just something I made, so you don't need to worry about it. But let's say, you know, you want to remove all tools. Once you remove all, it's going to do the same. Now, the debounds, I kind of messed up, but you just got to click it twice. But, um, yeah, something like this, you know, super simple. And um, I thought it was really cool. So let me know what you think. But, um, yeah, so we're going to hop straight into this. You're going to go into Replicate Storage and look at this main thing. So this is the Tools folder. Now, this folder is going to hold all the tools. So I know this isn't actually inserting from the catalog. Now, I... This is because Bloxburg does this their own way by having their own tools. So, you know, how you can do this is we're actually just going to grab gear right here, okay? We're going to do the sword, just something normal. And you're going to, you know, I put it inside, whatever. You're going to put it right here, and you're going to name it what you want it to be named. So I'm going to say sword. We don't want it to be dropped because, you know, you want to give it to other players. Um, and then that's all you got to do. So you got to put your tools in here. Once you put your tools in here, we're going to go into the Packpack GY and look at everything. So this is the backpack button. This is the button, the image button that we are going to be clicking to um, open the frames. Now you can add like tweens to this if you want. Feel free to search for some tutorials on that. Um, but right here you can just go to the image and change the image to your likings. You know, like I had the camera or whatever, but you know, change this to how you like it and what you want it to be. So I got the backpack for you. Um, and then we have the mainframe, the local script, and some sounds. This is the trash button sound. Um, everyone should be able to use these because this is a global, I mean, a non-copyright sound on uh, Roblox. So I just grabbed it from there. Um, but yeah, so we have the local script right here. It may look like a lot, but don't worry, it's not too much. Um, in here, we're going to look at that in a second here. We're going to go to the mainframe, okay? So this is what it's going to look like when you turn it to visible. Now, you want to make sure this is off when you... Um, like you're done with this script but make sure it's turned on to visible when you want to customize it so in here we have the main frame and then we have a scrolling frame and we have a text button this text button is going to be removing all tools you can customize it to your liking you know how however you like um and then yeah that's pretty simple so how this works is we use a ui grid layout and each frame has their own thing so in these things, um, and as you can tell, the UI grid layout's really nice because it automatically actually does this for you. So on big screens, it will have the big three right there for us. But once you duplicate one or, you know, configure each of them, basically we have a UI corner just making these cornered look nice. And we have the transparencies. You can change the background colors, you know, everything you like to your own likings. 
But right here we have a value. This is a string value. Now in the last video we did an int value because we're going to use the asset ID. But we're going to be using a string value right now. And what this is, is basically all like characters. You would say like uh, letters. They're all letters only. There's no numbers. So we have cup right here. We're going to change this to sort. This is what it's going to be exactly like in the uh, replicated storage. So we want to make sure of that. Now, um, you just change that to sword or whatever your name of your gear is. And then we can look at a, a few other things. So we have a button right here. Now, this one you can't really see because I made it invisible. But as you can tell, it's right on top of it. In here, we have an image label. Now, this image label is what basically is going to look like for the um, items. So let's say we I just did the sword. Um, I'll just change it to something stupid like that. I already have. Um, basically, this is the sword right here. You can change that to your liking. Um, and that's all you have to do. Now, I do have one more thing. In this button, what we do have is this image is set to nothing. That is the reason because what we do is when the person clicks the button, it's gonna change it into this number right here, and it's gonna look like that, exactly. So that's the whole point of this button right here. So when it's like that, let me change it back to there. Now, um, customizing this is a little different, but, so we're gonna look in the script. So we have all the local variables, you know, you don't really need to work about this, um, nothing too crazy but for you guys, but you know, just local variables are a way for giving us shortcuts to what we're needed to do in our script. So we have the back bu backpack button function. Um, we set a debounce, we play the buttons down, and when basically this gets clicked, we're just going to open this mainframe right here, and then if it's clicked again, it's going to set it to false, so, you know, pretty easy. Now, um, there is the main function, but we're going to go into the remove tools function real quick. So, the remove tools button is going to be this one right here. When it gets clicked, we're going to play the trash sound, and we're going to check in the player's backpack for any tools. If there is a tool in their backpack, we're going to destroy it. Now, this is basically everything not equipped. Um, by the way, so this is the hard part. I kind of forgot to say this in the, I did say this in the last video. When a player equips a tool, it sets its parent of the tool to the character, not to the backpack still. Uh, but normally all the tools are in the backpack, but when they equip it, it's set to the character. So what we do right here is we delete all the characters tools as in saying the one that it's equipped. Um, I didn't know Roblox did that. Honestly, it kind of confuses me. I don't know why they do that. But I guess that works. <laughs> um, then right here we have the changes check mark. So basically what this does is after what's going to happen is normally you're going to have these already checked mark on because you you have these tools selected. When you click it, it's going to make them blank like this and not have the check mark. So it's going to set it back to nothing in that image. So that's what it looks like. See how I'm changing uh, image button dot Im that image button dot image to nothing. That's because that's what it is right now in the image right here. So pretty simple with uh, that we have the main script so we are creating a for loop now in this loop We are gonna be checking in the scrolling frame for all the children So that's gonna be basically all everything in in here So that's gonna be UI grade layout frame all this stuff Then we're gonna check if V as in saying what we just checked all these get children if it is a frame now We created two new local variables new debounds and gear now if it is a frame which of course it will be um, we are going to create two new local variables, tool name value and image button. The tool name value is basically going to be inside the frame, and it's going to be this right here, and it's going to get that value. So once it gets that and it gets the image button, it checks if the player clicks the button. If they click the button, we're going to play the sound again, and we are going to use this new debounce and check, of course, if they don't have the tool or if they do. Now, if they don't have the tool right here, we are going to go inside the tools folder as in this one right here, we're gonna get all the children, make sure it is a tool, so it is. A, if these are the instant tool, which it is, we're gonna check for the name of the tool and make sure it equals tool name value, as in saying, we wanna make sure this value camera equals the name of camera in the tool folder. Then we're gonna create, get that local gear variable and we're gonna clone that tool. So this one right here, we're gonna clone it, as in saying, duplicate it, or sorry, uh, duplicating it. And then we're going to be setting this to the player backpack parent. So that's how that works. Then we are going to set the image to this custom image, which you guys should already know as the, um, sorry, uh, in here button, which this image is going to be uh, the check mark right here. Now you can customize this yourself by getting this number right here and changing it in the script. So super simple stuff, you guys. You can just put, you know, whatever number it is you get. Um, and then we're going to set the debounce back to true. So making sure that they tell us the script that they do own the sword or whatever the tool. 
then we are going to be setting um, when they click it again we're going to be setting the image to nothing as in saying they got rid of the item we're going to check their backpack and their character for the tool and we're going to destroy it set the b2d bounce back to false so then we go back into the whole script again so that's about it um now let's just test this one more time so i can show you we're going to set that out to visible backpack gui don't need to worry about this tools you're all good and you can just hit play and it should work totally fine um if you guys need a little more explanation on this, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Something pretty simple and easy for you guys. But as you can tell, I have the sword and I am going to be able to use it. Um, except this one's probably R6 and that's why I'm not able to use it. <laughs> but as you can tell, it removes it from our backpack. So we're all good and we don't need to worry about anything. And I'll just remove the tools. There we go. Hope you guys enjoy this video. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.